Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Brandon Aker. We reached out to see if anyone had a Dior bow in Chicago, and there is an expert for us here. So, we'll probably start with the unboxing footage. It doesn't look that different. Like, there could be a bass guitar in this. You open them up and... So, oh! So oh, of course! So that's why we have the neck extension. So then, it folds up like that. <laughs> Holy sh <laughs> the coolest part about when it's folded is that these long strings here, they're folded around this cylinder. Yeah. And they, they're, they're at tension still. So they're in tune. So you just... Yeah, so now you just unfold the neck, take this pin out, and I put it here so it can't collapse on me. And I can release Whoa. the bases. Now, so that's the full instrument. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you... Is, this, is that even a shot? No. <laughs> So we need to go even wider. It's really hard to get this thing in frame. It's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what is this thing? Fiorbo in English. Tiorba or Kitarone in mm -hmm. Italian. It's an Italian invention from, invented around 1580. Mm -hmm. And basically it's a member of the lute family. Yeah. So you know, in, in the Renaissance, the lute was kind of the guitar of its day. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, the bowl-shaped instrument with the same kind of shape but smaller. You see it in paintings all the time. Yeah. Is that um, what uh, makes it a lute rather than the, the guitar is the, the bowl shape on the back? That's one of the features that you, you, you can use to determine, oh, that's mm -hmm. a, a lute or a lute-like instrument. You know, yeah. The lute family is is vast. Because the lute had a whole family of like, little lute to big lute, if you think like violin, viola, mm -hmm. cello, bass, this is the bass lute of the family, this part from here to here. And then, so that was in the Renaissance. Then the Baroque period comes around, around 1600. This group in Florence got to get together called the Florentine Camerata, mm -hmm. and they said, we want to invent uh, this new style of music, Novo Musicae, this new music and it was gonna be opera, and we need the perfect instrument to accompany the voice, and this is what they came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Basically what we have is a lute on this half, and then they graft on this giant neck extension to add seven or eight more strings, and now we can not only play in this register, but also add that low contrabass. What, what are we looking at here? This is an eight string minus the bass? Right, so we have eight pegs here, basically a, a bass lute, and so that's what this is. If I basically just fret the, this half. Mm -hmm. How low does it go? How is it tuned? So basically, it's like actually like a guitar on yeah. this half. A, D, G, B, and then down the octave, E, A. Okay. Then we get to the long portion, mm -hmm. which is G, F, A, D, C, B, A, G. So that's a G, G. below drop D. Okay. So it's contrabass, yeah. G. Is this a situation where there isn't a standard tuning for these normally? The standard, standard. I, I would say is up to the, up to the player yeah. when you're playing. It depends on what you're doing. If you're playing mm -hmm. in an orchestra or for opera, then you decide what's the most useful notes that I need. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with the string material for, for lutes, but they I'm would not. use, they, they use gut. Normally it's actually sheep gut, yeah. and so sheep intestine. Uh -huh. And so that's what the strings are made of. Are these actual gut strings? Or so no? the frets are actual guts, and then the rest of them are, are gut and nylon mm -hmm. mixed together. They're kind of synthetic gut. Yeah. If you see here, actually on my, the, the fretted yeah, those, strings, they're wound. they're wound, and that's not historical. Uh, these are wound because if you have a gut string at this pitch, it sounds a bit more tubby, mm -hmm. um, but you need the length to give it the, the, clarify the pitch, to give it the punch. But because of the windings, it also has a good punch to it. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, it sounds a little bit different once I get to the, the low basses. Because it's so long, I have this really nice punchy bass range, and then I have this really delicate upper register. Yeah. My thumb is used to play all of the contrabass notes, the diapasons, we call them, and then my left hand only frets the, uh, the actual first mm -hmm. seven strings. How far does this go up? Like, does that go up to an octave? I have an octave, yeah, on yeah. top. So it's there, so I can do... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's still there. That, yeah. So you don't need really more than 12 frets. Because this is a bass instrument, they don't want it to go very high in the first mm -hmm. place. In fact, just when the instrument is getting higher, there's the highest note, it goes down the octave. And the reason for that is because 
when they were making this instrument bigger and bigger and bigger, they found out that the, the thin gut strings that you need to get those pitches an octave higher kept breaking. So they just tuned them down the octave, yeah. but it ended up working out in a really beautiful way because mm -hmm. then you have this really mid to contrabass range instrument. Mm -hmm. As a player, you have to adjust what you're used to because you know on a guitar, we're used to kind of thinking, you roll a chord and it goes and strums yeah. low to high. But on this one, to go low to high, I have to do this weird arpeggio where I go oh. at the end. So there's a whole piece by Capsberger from 1604 where you use that arpeggio. And then what I have here as well is my F, which is mm -hmm. here, uh, is stopped on the short neck. But I have yeah. an option to make it a long one and put it Oh, up there. so that's what the other one is for. F is the, the first note that if you're gonna change keys, mm -hmm. you're gonna want an F sharp first, right? It's mm -hmm. the first accidental. So now I can change it here without getting up. I, my old yeah. Fjordbo, the F was up there. And, that, and so I was, I'd play concerts and I'd have to get up and go, <laughs> one second everybody. You need, <laughs> you need another assistant. Yeah. Just to... <laughs> But so this is so cool because I finally have my F and I can just raise it to F sharp and keep playing. Also this, this folding thing, that's not normal and it's definitely not historical. So this you just need invented. an enormous case before this. And I have yeah. one. And I, I, getting on the train is, mm -hmm. is hell. Uh, <laughs> flying is the worst. And I'm you don't have any fine thing. tuners on the other side. Is exactly. that tough? The friction pegs have never worked for me on any instrument. You have like to that. get uh, really well fitted pegs. If the yeah. pegs are well fitted, they're great. One of the coolest things about this instrument, the frets, because they're made out of intestine, mm -hmm. just like the strings were, I tie them on myself. Yeah. And that means I can also move them. So I can slant mm -hmm. them to tune. Just like a sitar. Yeah. Is that, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you find a use for that or do you just... Absolutely. We live in the land of equal temperament. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've actually grown up hearing. Everything on the radio is an equal temperament. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is equal temperament is out of tune. Yeah. So all of these instruments that have frets that are set in equal temperament, are they're compromised so that they're actually equally out of tune each note. But yeah. we've come to accept that as being right because you can play in every key and it sounds good. What they did with these old instruments, because you can tie on the frets, is they played in temperaments. And what that means is you can divide the octave differently than 12 even notes, and you can favor certain chords by playing this normal G major chord, an equal tempered uh, third. It sounds okay. Yeah. But the third is sharp. So I can take this note here, for example, if I'm playing a piece in G major, and I want that really nice B, I can just slant the fret down, and now... I mean, that sounds like a fourth. Beautiful. It's perfectly in tune. That was something that, when I first started recording with guitar, mm. just drove me crazy. Yes. And I didn't realize that there's compromises on the fretboard. So I would be strumming, especially a D chord. I hate the D chord. Yeah. It's even not exactly equal temperament. So part of its sound is that it's kind of out of tune. What you do is you sort of, you figure out, I'm playing, for example, a suite that's in the key of G major. So I'm gonna tune this low note to F sharp. And then I'm gonna get my frets are rearranged so that G major sounds fantastic. But a G sharp major chord would sound awful. Mm -hmm. And that way I'm, I'm gonna sound so in tune. So you don't want to play this thing? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Looking down at this is really intimidating. You forget everything you know, right? Yeah. There is a guitar tuning buried in these strings here, and you got to find it. So this is a C, and this, so from there, that'd be your anchor, and then you can make a C major chord. Okay. There we are. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. <laughs> as soon as I take my hand off of it, I'm... Yeah. Wow, this is really confusing, yeah. So if this is a G... Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Try the A minor chord. So Ooh. Now you can use the top A string. Where's, where's the A this here? This is your low A, you're gonna play it like this with a rest stroke. Like that, and then you can... Ooh. Open your bass. Yeah, yeah, you got the bass, okay. One, two, three, four.
That was brave to venture into the upper. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I figured, you know, you get, you get like a seven out of 12 chance <laughs> of hitting a note and key. So I figured I'd just go for it. We're super resonant. There we go. Nice. I'm so turned around, I'm not. You just gotta use your ear, I think. Yeah. Jeez, it's like I go to, all right, here's the, because normally, crazy. yeah, normally it's like I go further than I need to and then go down. But here, I go further than I need to, I think I need to, and I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> and like even uh, earlier, I needed to mute the strings and I'm used to, you know, yeah. even on an eight string or a nine string, I could go, but. You're supposed to play with like finger style with uh, your, yeah. your pinky down. And because your pinky's oh, down, there's no, oh, geez. that gives you reference to know how far the bass strings yeah. are. Because you can't look at your right hand the whole time you play. Yeah. So you have to memorize where the pitches are. And it's the distance between your pinky and the thumb. Yeah, yeah that's, that this that is awareness. really far. I mean, I if I put my pinky down enough to where I know it's not going to be muting the string, yeah. I mean, it's that much. It's huge. Yeah, it's enormous. People like me who play these instruments, our specialty is to try to play these instruments like they were yeah. played, to get as close to historical authenticity mm -hmm. as possible. So we read these old treatises in the 17th century and look at these paintings and say, okay, what were they trying to get at? And our job is to figure out how to make, make the sound sound as close as possible mm -hmm. to what they were doing. There it is. Let's yeah, this one, second from, okay. <laughs> I am having a lot of trouble wrapping my head around this. It'll take a minute if you Yeah. Just stretched. You, you just went for it and got it. it was amazing. <laughs> that was just a gamble. Okay. I'm gonna try this one again. It's a really beautiful instrument. It's it's a lot to wrap your head, head around. It takes a while. Um, if you'd like, I was thinking I brought another instrument. So we yeah. jam. Yeah, we should. D minor A, D minor C, F C, D minor A. Okay, I'm gonna play it slow. So the just having one, on yeah, second. just having my entire life being a C chord, I look to the high E yeah, and then I find the C and go from there and just having it one string off. Okay, I'm gonna get it though. A 17th century, 12 bar blues essentially. Cool. And that right there, there's a, there's a thousand pieces based on that. I also love when you're playing um, an instrument like this with so many strings that are there to freely vibrate, yeah. is you get all these great sounds out of, you'll hit a note, and then you get the overtones. these other, yeah. So if you just think of these two, I mean E and A, right? Yeah. Part of that was sounding really good. Yeah, yeah. 
think you're officially the third best Thierba player in Chicago. Do you want to try to play this thing? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is more my speed. When you have the, this range, to just to have this, this ability to have a low note. This hand is kind of like a left hand of the piano, and this is kind of the right. I've been playing mostly minor stuff, but in G major, there's tons of things you can do, like... Um... If you want a high note, you have to go way up here, but then it sounds great with the juxtaposition. You know, that register, the, the difference between that contrabass range to the treble is, is huge. So it, yeah. it just has this, you know, powerful, deep, warm sound. I'm sure I could do this for another five hours, <laughs> but we do need to end the video. So you can subscribe if you like. I'm sure this isn't the last time we do something like this on this channel. Also, Brandon has a channel if you'd like to check it out. We end with a song. <laughs> it's a bit of a risk after the prep work. <laughs>